Okay, so we have some uh, new information about the disappearance of Gonzalo Lira. Um, watch my previous video if you haven't, if you're not already up to date on this. Uh, this is a pretty big story. You know, I would expect more American journalists to be disconcerted by this. The fact that in Ukraine we have an American citizen that was speaking out against the Zelensky regime and also against the Putin regime, just exercising his free speech. And of course, in Ukraine right now, it's no secret that it's literally illegal to criticize the Zelensky regime. They passed like an emergency ruling from what I understand that you're not allowed to do that. And now we have American citizens being disappeared, possibly killed in Ukraine, a supposed ally. I thought we were supposed to be back in Ukraine. Why are they disappearing our own people? And obviously, <laughs> Coach Red Pill, Gonzalo Lira, is a dual citizen of the United States and Chile. So how come there isn't more light being shed on this? This is one of the biggest stories. It should be one of the biggest stories in the whole world right now, or at least in the United States. The fact that possibly Zelensky's own goons kidnapped this guy and maybe killed him. Now, my previous video explains, you know, the, the, the whole situation as to why we believe this is the case. So I'm not going to get into that and rehash any of it, but we have new developments here. We have... This journalist, Sarah Ashton Cirillo, um, this is a transgender journalist, progressive, well-known to infiltrate far-right groups. I'll get into that in a second. Um, but now she's openly infiltrated the Azov Battalion in Kharkov, the same region, the same area that Coach Red Pill was living in and reporting from on the ground. Um, and so she's sort of on op opposite sides, right? Coach Red Pill, he was, I, I guess you could say a little bit more sympathetic to Putin or a little more critical of the Zelensky regime and reporting from the ground citizen journalist in Kharkov or Kharkiv, whatever. Um, and she was on the opposite side, sort of very, very pro Zelensky. And she's been working hand in hand with neo-nazi azov battalion members uh and she was one of the first to report on the fact that bots manoa and that other dude that was in the kraken unit in the azov battalion were the ones that captured and possibly killed coach red pill so she's highly involved in this situation and so as soon as word got out that Coach Red Pill might have been captured by the SBU or the Azov Battalion or, wh or whoever. And she was part of spreading this info. But it seems like she's trying to backtrack a bit here and saying, look, he's not dead. I have sources. Wink, wink, wink. I have sources that are telling me that Coach Red Pill is still alive. And, you know, it's almost like th th there's this fake sort of uh it's almost like this paper tiger effort to make it look like he's somehow still alive he maybe he is maybe he is pray that he is pray to jesus that he is i really do because I, I really like this guy you know i've been looking more into coach red pill i'll show you a, a quick clip from, from a video he's actually on the verge of death in the next year or so uh because he has a heart condition and a lot not a lot of people knew that but anyway, so that's that's a whole, that's part of the reason why I think he was risking his life speaking out against the Re Zelensky regime in Ukraine, in Kiev and Kharkiv, um, so openly is because he is going to die soon. He has like a health issue that he's like guaranteed to die soon. He uh, has talked about that. But, um, anyways, let's let, let's look at. I forget what I was about to say there, but let's look at what. Sarah has come out and said um, now to s sort of save face and, and put out this narrative that uh, uh, Gonzalo Lira, Coach Red Pill, is alive and well. And there's more efforts being done here, you could tell, to sort of cover this up um, or, or, or I should say um, put a Band-Aid on the situation 
and because because it's about to explode. Like Glenn Greenwald is starting to pick this up, and this is what this is why I think you have this effort to sort of slow down um, the grassroots effort to expose this situation. This is a huge story. I mean, at the, on the face of it, especially if it's what we think it is. Like, if the Azov Battalion captured an American citizen and just killed them, whoa! Like, this should be global headline news. Like, if this was in Iran, Iran or, or if this were in uh, Afghanistan or Iraq, you know, if it was something like that, this would be, like, all over the media. But anyways, I digress a bit here. Let's talk, or let's watch... <laughs> This uh, creature go on to tell us what, uh, according to her or him or whatever, uh, is going on. Good evening. Good evening. Sarah Ashton Cirillo, Kharkiv, Ukraine, where over the last few days, the topic of YouTuber, pundit, columnist, potential Russian asset, alleged Russian spy, Gonzalo Lira has taken up a significant amount of the conversation regarding Kharkiv, Ukraine, the Russian invasion, and my role as a journalist. And one thing many people have asked me from both sides of the discussion was to find out if and when Gonzalo Lira died. And this is what I can report, direct from my sources, not secondhand information. Since April 15th, when Gonzalo Lera was picked up by security services, there has been no indication that he is dead. Once again, I will repeat, it appears that Gonzalo Lera is in fact alive. This is Sarah Ashton Cirillo, Kharkiv, Ukraine. More to come. Notice how she's being vague about the whole thing. Oh, directly from my sources, my anonymous sources that I'm not going to name. Uh, there is no evidence that he's dead directly from my sources. And uh, it appears he's not dead according to some of the evidence I've heard from my sources. It's like very vague. You know, when you see this, when there isn't a direct sort of uh, allusion, at least an allusion to what exactly the source is or, you know, like if this guy's still alive and y'all want to prove it so badly, uh, Azov Battalion affiliated uh, pro Zelensky weirdos, why don't you just show us a video of him? Why don't you just let him release a video saying, I'm okay, look, I'm, I'm in jail, okay? Or like, you know, um, I'm being held uh, against my will, but, you know, I'm alive. Why not do that? Because, I don't know, I don't know, maybe maybe he's not okay. I don't know. I really hope he is. God forbid. Because, again, I, I, I kind of like this guy. So, you have this new fake account uh, people are following. Um and it's obvious disinformation. Um, this individual claiming that he is Gonzalo Lira and he had to create a new account because his old accounts have been compromised. It's, it's bull crap because it, here's the thing. If he were alive, why wouldn't he just post a video proving that it's him? Nobody believes this account is really him Go figure. Um, so, you know, there's some posts on this Twitter account. He says this, old accounts are compromised. I have not made a new telegram. Michael John Cirillo is a system pig in lipstick and a CIA lackey. Right. Yeah. Like, and, and, and you could just read the comments. A lot of people are like, yeah, okay. Can you verify somehow there is so much confusion, confusion and tre treachery um, until more proof that this is coach not buying it? There's no way it's him. 
if it were really him, obviously this guy's a smart guy. He would just come out and put out a video saying it's really me. My accounts are really compromised, but no, it's all this fluffy, uh, sort of hearsay. Like it's me guys swear. And there's no real proof. And then he puts up this photo, by the way, uh, earlier today. And it's a fake photo. He says he's in Belarus, right? And you can see here, if you look, I don't know, does my... Yeah, it shows it. I don't know if you guys can see in the lower left-hand corner of this photo. You see this right here? This is overlapping. You can see it's like a almost like a Photoshop. Uh, and this was done in the photo to prevent um, anybody from being able to reverse image search the photo and get more info on to who this fake Gonzalo Lira account on Twitter really is. So you can see they're pretending that this is a photo in Belarus and that this is what Gonzalo Lira has posted to prove this is him in Belarus. It's such an, a vague, obscure photo. This is how I know it's not him. You know, it's just like, why not just post in your normal account, number one? Number two, why not just post a video you know no one's going to believe it's you? Yeah, and then you're posting fake images with this overlap so nobody can reverse image search the the image. Yeah, it's fake. Um, you also have Gonzalo Lira's Wikipedia page uh, just totally deleted um, for the most part. Not totally deleted, but a lot of it was deleted. Um... Yeah, so this article is being considered for deletion in accordance with Wikipedia's deletion par policy. Please share your thoughts on the matter at the article's deletion page discussion. So it's being considered maybe deleted, and I think it's some of it already has been deleted and changed, but um, you know, they're trying to cover up this guy and trying to fill in holes and all of these things to try to make it to, to try to tone down the uh, the hype surrounding and by the way, Mark Hay at Goraladka, this is the person that purportedly doxed Gonzalo Lira from the Daily Beast. And what do you know? The Daily Beast. So this is this is part this is partly what started the whole thing, which could have possibly got him captured or killed, was this journalist at the Daily Beast, you know, writing the article and you know, purportedly doxing um, Gonzalo Lira, and what do you know? The Daily Beast. Look at this. I didn't even notice this. It just shows you these people are satanic. Yeah, Sarah Ashton Cirillo. You know the the one I talked about just a few minutes ago. There, uh, the um, she actually has this. What do you call it? Um, I don't even know. Background image on her Twitter. Uh, yeah. Uh, saying that uh, she's more evil than Satan himself. Yeah, these people are Satanists. You know, this is why I think this person's probably highly involved with like occult intelligence agencies. Um, but what do you know about Sarah Ashton Cirillo? Let's. Let's look a little further into that situation. Well, there was a Daily Beast article written about her not too long ago as well. And what was the Daily Beast article about her in pertaining to? Well, it goes on to say how she infiltrated the Nevada GOP back in 2020 and the Proud Boys. And so this is the Daily Beast writing about her, the same person involved in this whole thing and the same outlet involved in this whole thing with Lyra. Um, yeah, so she's been well known to be COINTELPRO um, infiltrator. Um 
infiltrating the GOP and the Proud Boys, trying to expose the Proud Boys, trying to expose the GOP in Nevada during the 2020 Trump presidential election. Uh, and it goes here, goes on to say here, out of the Daily Beast article about this person, a transgender poker player and progressive activist who went undercover and cozied up to right-wing extremists. A state Republican party desperate to see Donald Trump win. A Vegas-based GOP consultant, the Proud Boys. This is the bizarre story connecting a far-right paramilitary group in an effort in Nevada to pressure election officials to overturn the 2020 election results. In the months leading up to the 2020 election, Sarah Ashton Cirillo, a self-described progressive activist. Isn't it weird how progressive activists now are siding with actual neo-Nazis in Ukraine? It's just such a weird, strange timeline. Where I mean, this isn't even hyperbole. This is like open, out in the open, like pure cognitive dissonance happening. Or is it cognitive dissonance? I don't think it really is. I think it's more just intelligence operations. And they don't even have to use chameleon efforts anymore because the people who are paying attention already think they're all liars anyway, so they don't care, right? A self-described progressive activist embedded herself in GOP circles as part of her research for a book on right-wing extremism. What she found was a Republican consultant desperate to team the Proud Boys up with the Nevada GOP in order to challenge ballots and flip the presidential election. These guys are too stupid to look into my progressive politics, Ashton Cirillo told the Daily Beast in a phone interview this week because they were so eager to tokenize me. She's probably right about that. But anyway, you know, if you're watching this and you're sympathetic or a part of the Azov Regiment, or if you're very pro-Zelensky and you love supporting those fake neo-Nazis, by the way, because you're Slavs, there I said it, um... If you're watching this, maybe you should think to ask yourself, is Sarah Ashton Cirillo any better than your hated Coach Red Pill enemy? Because she's been well known to infiltrate and be a rat into right-wing groups. So why would you trust her? Maybe you should think twice. Maybe you should out her and do something about that. Instead of worrying about uh, somebody who's openly opposed to you and opposed to Putin. Yeah, maybe you should focus on the snakes in the grass before you worry about the Goliaths. Because the snakes are what will get you. So this, that's a message if you're watching and you're part of this Azov Battalion or one of these associated groups. Or maybe you're just an intelligence operative too and you don't care, or you're working hand-in-hand hand knowingly with people like Sarah Ashton Cirillo. That's probably the most likely scenario. I don't know. But hey, if you're a true believer, maybe you should think twice about this and focus on getting rid of your snakes in the grass. Anyways, yeah, so here's Sarah Ashton Cirillo um, calling the Maripol situation a genocide. Well, it's war. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of just like war, but I wouldn't call it genocide. You don't know what the, the genocide, I'm not going to get into it. Um, she says this, quote, thinking about the Mariupol genocide by Russia tonight, a hold out hope for Ukraine and the Azov regiment at Azovstal. Please like and retweet to show that you stand with Ukraine and these brave patriots all over the nation. Okay, literal Nazis, that's fine. I mean, whatever. Um, and by the way, our friend Sarah, guess who this is? <laughs> that's, that's the Sarah person. This is him. This is him. Obama 44. Mm. It's just kind of funny. I don't know. And, and look at look, look at this with this Daily Beast. This is actually out of Yahoo News, but it's a copy and paste of the Daily Beast article written about her. 
Sarah before her mind and body found congruence. <laughs> oh, you can't make this shit up. Oh, and by the way, watch out because they're coming for others next. Anybody who's critical of Zelensky or, you know, um, waving the Z on their, their, their sleeve or whatever. Uh, this is Sarah Ashton Cirillo advocating for having Patrick... Lancaster be next. So this was in response to Gonzalo Lero being disappeared. Someone says to one of her posts, excellent news. This Kremlin paid spy was spreading lies about Ukraine even before the war. A shame for Chileans and real journalists. Well deserved. Patrick, you're next. And she goes, yes, Patrick must go. Patrick is this dude, Patrick Lancaster, which by the way, I would check out his channel. Man, it is crazy some of the footage this dude gets. He's in the Donbass region. He's in Mariupol right now. And even if like you're totally, totally like love Zelensky, cokehead Zelensky, this is still worth watching. You know, this is like, war footage of what's going on in Maripool. I mean, like, he's, like, filming dudes right behind them firing their AK-47s at the Azov Battalion. It's like, whoa, this is some pretty cool stuff. I mean, it's not cool. It's war. But, I mean, you know, us dudes, um, you know, this is, this is some, this is some wild footage. So, it's uh, Patrick Lancaster on YouTube. Just really, really remarkable stuff with this guy's covering he's just like some sort of sort of creepy weird dude that's just following following around these um you know uh eastern pro putin z forces in the um in the donbass region so it's really kind of cool so anyway that's all i gotta say about that and and also worth noting and i kind of want to I don't know. I kind of want to leave on this note here. Um, this is, and, and like he could just be alive, you know. I don't know, right? It could this all could be just alarmism? Possibly. We have no proof either way yet. We have indication he's definitely at least being held against his will. He's definitely been detained at the very least, you know. And maybe it'll turn out fine, you know. Maybe he's just being detained, and then there'll be some sort of extradition or something, and maybe he'll be let go. I don't know, or maybe, God forbid, it'll be like a Julian Assange a situation situation where he's sort of held captive for a long time and tortured, God forbid, or maybe he's, maybe he's dead, but in reality, if you watch this, this is one of his Patreon videos that he put out almost exactly a year ago, in April of 2021, he's going to be dead within the next year. Because he has a heart condition. So check this out. Exclusively because, uh, well, quite frankly, you guys on Patreon are, are like my hardcore fans. Okay? I mean, I assume that if you're paying five bucks a month for my content, I mean, you really like my content, right? So I'm only going to be putting this here. And I don't want to make a big to-do about this video and some of the things I'm going to be talking about. I just want you to take the basic message from this video. Okay, let me explain. See, recently I found out that it is unlikely I'm gonna live very long because of a heart condition that I have. I'm not gonna go into the specifics of it because it's nobody's business but my own, but it's fairly serious and the likelihood is that I'm not gonna be around for more than 18 months, 24 months, something like that. Okay, so anyway, um, that's the reality and it's led me to think a lot about the issue of time. When you're young, you don't realize how limited time really is. So, it's almost a nine-minute video. I'm not going to play the whole thing. Um, I'll, I'll leave a link to it. But, um, I mean, it is one of his Patreon videos. So, I kind of feel a little... I mean, I kind of feel a little bad sharing it because it's supposed to be for his Patreon members. I don't think it was supposed to be, like, something that got out widely and for free. But it's just like an unlisted video on YouTube 
Uh, so, I mean, it's free, but it's just unlisted. So uh, I'm just going to leave a link to it because I think it's it's relevant. I think he'll forgive, you know, <laughs> like the situation is very relevant. And I think this video is actually worth watching. I think he should make it public, but it's his own prerogative. Um, and and uh, he might not be alive, so I don't know. But um, it's about time and, and, you know, it's it, his perspective on time now that he found out that he only has a couple of years left max to live. It's really enlightening. So I'm going to leave a link to it. Anyways, also, if you want to support my work, I have Patreon in the description below as well. Um, if you want, you know, to help build my channel, if you believe in what I do, if you think what I do has value. Also, please follow me on Gab and Twitter, BitChute, Odyssey, and Rumble. As always, it's been Press. Keep your head up, stay real, and no fear.